Welcome to 29th lecture of video course on Tribology. The topic of present lecture is rolling element bearings. In previous lecture also we discussed about the rolling element bearings. So, we are continuing with those discussions. In previous lecture we showed this slide and uh, say that couple of bearings are exclusively used for the radial load. The first configuration, second configuration where alpha is equal to 0. These kind of bearings are meant for the radial load to support the radial load. Where the alpha angle is increasing to 45 degree, this kind of configuration can be used to support radial load as well as thrust load, axial load. When uh, alpha turn out to be 90 degree. The main aim for this kind of bearing is to support axial load, thrust load that is the main focus. So, it depends on the load arrangement. Various configurations of the bearings can be used whether it is a ball bearing or roller bearing or table roller bearing. It will be decided based on load, applied load which need to be supported by this bearing. A better configuration or a better presentation uh, of this bearing is given in the present slide. These are three dimensional models are given. So, this is a ball bearing with a some sort of curvature, some partition. Uh, there is no complete race, there is a some sort of uh, fragmentation of the race, and this looks like a, this kind of configuration. The alpha is a 45 degree. This kind of bearings can be used for the axial as well as the radial load. That is why I say the radial load is pointed over here, axial load is also pointed over here. Now, when we see this kind of a roller bearing, roller have a some curvature, it is not these are rollers are not a straight, not only this, there is a some sort of a groove arrangement in the race or ring where this kind uh, this roller can be placed. Again, this kind of uh, bearings can be used for supporting majorly radial load, but to some extent axial load. So, that arrow, which so is the length of arrow is showing the small axial load and more radial load. Similarly, in this case a more axial load and small uh, radial load, while in this case we are able to show that this bearing is meant only for thrust load. This is a thrust roller bearing rollers are arranged in a cage to separate to keep some space between the rollers. So, there should be not be much sliding among the rollers and load will be transferred from one ring to other ring, but motion will not be transferred. If one ring is rotating other is a stationary, the motion is not getting transferred, but load is getting transferred and this is shown in this configuration. This is a where the alpha is equal to 90 degree. Alpha 90 means it is meant for axial load to support the thrust load. Now, this bearing is shown as a needle roller bearing. We can see the needles or uh, length of this roller is much larger than diameter of those rollers. Again, these needle roller bearings, uh, needle rollers are placed in cage to avoid the colliding or uh, rubbing of one roller against another roller. And these bearings are meant to support radial load. These bearings are not capable to support axial load. Similarly, this roller bearing you can see the length to diameter ratio is much lesser than this uh, bearing this kind of configuration is used to support radial load. So, there is the outer ring, there is a cage, rollers and inner ring. Now, this bearing is showed with a radial load to support radial load as well as axial load and there is some sort of a taper group. Roller are inclined at the axis. So, it can be sustained 
or uh, this kind of bearing can sustain some axial load. This slide shows a comparative study among the coefficient of frictions. You can see the coefficient of, coefficient of friction f for a self aligning ball bearing is given as a 0 0.001. Coefficient of friction for a needle roller bearing is given as a 0 0.0045. For other bearings also this coefficient of friction is given. But we know very well the coefficient of friction is a system property. It cannot be just a bearing property. Without lubricant, coefficient of friction will increase. With the too much lubricant, again coefficient of friction will increase. And lubricant with a different viscosity of with a different boundary additives may show different results. So, we say that coefficient of friction as such is a system property where the lubricant plays a role kind of configuration or arrangement of a roller bearing will play a role. In addition, how these bearings are mounted will be playing important role, but this is a comparative study. We are assuming good lubricant been used and bearings are properly mounted. In the other situation, this is a relative ranking of bearing from coefficient of friction point of view. So, one question comes or we say that one point or one discussion point comes, should I choose self aligning ball bearing for the every case. In previous slide we say that depending on the load we had to choose a configuration and if we have configuration or we have option then we may choose one of the bearing or we say that for all the kind of loads or we say in our application all kind of bearings can be utilized then coefficient of friction comes. But we know radial loader bearing and thrust bearing cannot be kept in the same basket. So, depending which is the application what is the application where load is a radial or thrust we have to select the kind of the bearing first and then if we have a choice when we can then we can think about a coefficient of friction. To think about uh, selection of bearing from a uh, load point of view say pure radial load pure axial load a combination of axial and radial load. We have uh, options available say for pure radial load I can think about a needle roller bearing. I can think about a cylindrical roller bearing. Many times we are able to think about the ball bearings also, but if I compare from load point of view, from radial load point of view, cylindrical roller bearing and needle roller bearing will be preferable choice compared to ball bearings. Coming to the pure axial load, we will be thinking either the ball bearing or roller bearing, but of thrust type. Is a thrust cylindrical roller bearing, thrust ball bearing. There is another configuration of ball bearing what we call as a four point angular contact ball bearing. Why we are using the word four? Because we know the bo uh, in case of the ball bearing we will be having two points of contacts, but if you want to increase the load carrying capacity in axial direction then we need to increase the contact points and optimum contact point in that situation are 4. That is why we say the 4 point angular contact ball bearing. Coming to combined load, we have a number of options, but preferable options are taper roller bearing, spherical roller bearing or angular contact ball bearings. These are preferable choices. However, the deep groove ball bearing also can be used for the combined load, but in that situation axial load fraction is much lesser than radial load. However, other than the load option, if we have a requirement for the high speed application or we say that we require extremely high running accuracy, 
then we have a different option. So, deep groove ball bearing generally have more confined uh, rollers, they will show better support or they will provide better support to the spindle or shaft that is why they can be named with a high running accuracy or closely confined roller bearings can be used for that purpose. Coming to the high speed application where we require laser contact in that situation we can recommend cylindrical roller bearing with liquid lubricant or angular contact bearing with liquid lubricant. All other configuration can be used with the greases. When we think about high speed application we need to think from liquid lubricant point of view and bearing need to have high load carrying capacity where Caesar has a lesser tendency. So, based on the requirements whether it is a radial load, thrust load, combined load, high accuracy, high speed application, we can choose one kind of one of the this kind of bearing and if we have options we can choose from coefficient from friction point of view. Now, this is a another slide shown as a for the comparative study whether we are adding one more parameter that is a misalignment capabilities. Say deep groove ball bearings they have a medium misalignment capability. However, roller bearing, needle roller bearing, taper roller bearing they have very low capability to sustain misalignment. So, if there is a misalignment and we have a choice we prefer self aligning ball bearing or self aligning spherical roller bearing from misalignment capabilities point of view. The low effective load carrying capacity will be lesser, but from misalignment point of view they are preferable. We know if there is a misalignment and if I am going to choose a cylindrical roller bearing whatever the load carrying capacity is given that will not be sufficient because a load will be concentrated on one or two points and will generate very high coefficient of friction there and this kind of uh, bearing will fail. So, slightly lesser load carrying capacity, but more adjustable bearing or more adaptable bearing can perform much better way. Similarly, we have options for uh, other bearing. So, now if I think from a combination point of view, deep groove ball bearing is able to sustain major radial load and to some extent axial load. Cylindrical roller bearing only few configurations can be used for the axial load also. The major thing or with the cylindrical uh, roller bearings majorly are used for the radial load, but some configuration like this configuration can be used for slightly axial load. Coming to needle roller bearing they should not be used for axial load unless there is a axial uh, needle roller bearing or thrust needle roller bearing. Angular contact bearing and thrust ball bearings they are mainly used for the axial load those should be used for that purpose. So, this kind of uh, comparison gives some option to us how to select the bearing. Sometime we need to think if there is application of radial load and axial load, how to treat that, how to find which load is really required for our application. To deal with the situation, we can deal with uh, or we can say that there is a equivalent load concept. We need to find what is equivalent load. How to define equivalent load? The P it is a V into X into FR plus y into f a. What is the meaning of this term? What is a v? What is x? What is f a? What is y? What is f a? It has been defined in this uh, slide. So, v is the rotation factor where the inner ring is rotating or outer ring is rotating. If there is a rotation of outer ring, v factor will increase 
or we say that impulse load is going to be increased if we are allowing outer ring to rotate and inner ring to be stationary. Coming to the x factor is the radial factor is a fraction which need to be multiplied with the radial load f r is a radial load. Similarly, y is a thrust factor need to be multiplied with the thrust load. So, once we know f a once we know f r we know whether the inner ring is rotating or outer ring is rotating we can choose some bearings and for those bearings we can find what is the value of x and y from the catalog. So, x and y bearings or uh, values will be given in a catalog from uh, different manufacturer. For example, if I think about the deep groove ball bearing factors are given of course, uh, for a single row for a double row these factors are slightly different and these factors are decided based on the one parameter that is the E often quoted in catalog. And we need to compare this E with this ratio, what we say what is axial force and what is static load carrying capacity of the bearing. C 0 will be available in catalog, F is generally given in question. So, we need to find out the fraction for that kind of bearing and uh, inner ring if it is rotating this V will be 1, where outer ring is rotating and inner ring is stationary this factor will be 1.2. Based on this we can find out what is the f divided by v divided by f r and based on this factor we find whether the this ratio is more than e or lesser than e. Is this factor is a more than e then only we need to choose this factor x and y otherwise it will be always 1 and 0. If this fraction is a lesser than E. We say that we have selected this bearing or this kind of bearing and we have a value of E as a 0.19. If this fraction XL load is a lesser than 19 percent and of course, inner ring is uh, rotating, then we say that this bearing can sustain the load XL load without accounting or without calculating a factor load. Similarly, there is a column or there is a row for the angular contact ball bearing where the contact angle alpha is going to decide what will be the factor. If the contact angle is 20 degree, we can see this for single row this factor is 0 0.43 and 1.0. As this contact angle is increasing, x value is decreasing or fraction of radial load is decreasing and this is also decreasing. When we talk about the double row in this case it is comparing with E. Similarly, for the self aligning ball bearing however, in this case self aligning where this already have adjustment. So, it does not affect their inner ring rotation or outer ring rotation V is one always one for self aligning ball bearing. So, based on this kind of chart based on the bearing or selected bearing we can find out what will be effective load on bearing if there is a combination of load applied on the bearing. If there is no combination if it is exclusively cell thrust force is applied we do not have to use we do not have to calculate P equivalent using F R and F A that will be straightforward. Similarly, if there is a exclusively radial load then I do not have to or we do not have to calculate a factor load using that equation a factor load is given as such in a problem. Now, we use a word or um, we use a parameter C 0 in a previous slide that is known as static load carrying capacity. When we see the catalog, catalog will be given in this term there will be d dimension the diameter of what we known as a bow diameter, outer diameter, length of bearing that is a b, c is a dynamic load carrying capacity, c 0 is a static load carrying capacity. Then we have another uh, 
column that is uh, shown as a fatigue load limit. Then we have a column for uh, whether lubrication is a grease lubricated or the oil lubricated. Based on uh, this speed will be decided as we say that it maximum speed of operation can be decided based on this and often speed of operation in case of the oil will be higher than the grease. So, now the time is uh, to define what C 0 and what is a C which is generally quoted listed in catalog. What we say a static load carrying capacity that is a C 0 is related to how much force has been applied and that force is able to generate 0 0.01 percent of ball diameter deflection. Say that when we apply a load on any structure or any element or any material, that material is going to deflect may be at the angstrom level or a nanometer level or in the micrometer level depend on the stiffness of the element and depend on applied load. And C 0 says this is a load when applied on the ball bearing or the roller bearing the deflection will be equivalent to 0 0.01 percent of rolling element diameter. If it is a roller, it will be roller diameter. If it is a ball, it is a ball diameter. Another one, the ball diameter is a 5 mm. Then what we have to do 0 0.01 divided by 100 into 5 mm. That will be deflection. Or it will be 5 into 10 is to minus 4 mm. Or we say the 500 micron will be the deflection. Fast this much load and we should never exceed static load more than C 0. Coming to the dynamic load, we know every rolling bearing or every rolling element bearing will be subjected to fatigue loading. That is decided what will be the life of bearing. Say it is a radial load, it, if it is a thrust bearing then it will be thrust load apply to a group of identical bearings because these bearings are tested in group it is not individual bearing with stationary outer ring that means V is always one for this situation. And with this kind of load bearing is able to show 10 to so 6 rotation of inner ring or bearing is able to show 10 to so 6 cycles for the apply load equivalent to C in Newton. When inner ring is rotating and outer ring is stationary. So, these uh, ratings or these um, capacities load capacities are defined in catalog. How to utilize this? What is the benefit of using uh, this kind of uh, parameters? We say that when we have values of C available, we can find out what will be the life of bearing. How is a fatigue life of the bearing? What will be the survivability of that kind of bearing? And that equation uh, is uh, famous with the uh, author name uh, Lundberg and Palmgren. We have showed an earlier slide the palm grain uh, competitive chart for coefficient of friction. That guy is more famous for um, bearing life equation because very famous equation. What we say that this is a bearing life follows power law. What is the meaning of this? She says the C is a generally capacity given in a catalog power A into 10 to 6 cycle will be equivalent to any load applied on the bearing again power A into L 1 rotations. If P L is a lesser than C naturally bearing life will be more than 10 to 6 cycles. Of course, that depends on the what is the value of A. Generally value of A is more than 1. 
it is equal to 3 for ball bearing and slightly more than 3 for roller bearing that is a 10 by 3 that is 3.33. In other words, for the same load, same capacity, roller bearing will show slightly longer life compared to ball bearings. Now, if we define this, the Lundberg palm grain equation, this kind of equation is valid for reliability equal to 0.9 or 90 percent survivability or sometime we use L10 life that means that failure probability is 10 percent. If I rearrange this equation, we can find bearing life in hours by this relation which is C is a dynamic load carrying capacity, P is uh, applied load. If applied load is a mixture, a combination, then we should use P equivalent where the radial load and um, thrust load has been combined equal to uh, in, uh, in multiply 10 is to 6 cycle divide by 60 to convert minute in a speed uh, minute in hours and speed in uh, rotation per minute. This is a simple uh, way to define bearing life as I say when we design when we select bearing for any equipment we say bearing will survive for 2 years, 2 and half years, 3 years, 4 years, 5 years that will be based on this kind of equation with probability of success as a 90 percent and probability of failure as a 10 percent. If we want any other probability then we need to modify this equation and modification can be gained by this relation. What says that L for the some probability it can be 99 percent, 95 percent can be 50 percent also as function of log 1 by r that is a reliability, uh, reliability value it may be lesser than 1 and 0 0.99, 0 0.95, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9 then this whole factor will be 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 depend. What is aim of the design? When we have this equation we can find out the probability of success or life for that kind of probability and uh, this is uh, given for the for as a fatigue life we are not talking about the cracking we are not talking about any other failure exclusively pitch formation exclusively fatigue failure of a ring. If there is a misalignment in fact your load will increase there is a possibility of the cracking of the bearings. in those situation this equation will not be valid will not be very useful. Now, let us take a one example, we say applied load on a bearing is radial load and that value of the radial load is 2224 Newton. Speed of operation always the rotational speed is given as a 1500 rpm. 1500 rotations per minute and what is the desirable life. So, we want to operate that machine for 8 hours in a day usual, 5 days in a week again common practice and we want that bearing in machine should survive for 5 years. There is a possibility of some shock loading, some transient loading in between so, we need to take slightly larger factor than the shock loading because that is going to increase the fatigue failure that is going to cause some slightly more fatigue failure is equivalent to 1.5 and we need to select a bearing for a sharp diameter of more than 25 mm. So, we need to see catch lock available to us if we know what is required dynamic load carrying capacity. So, what we will do? We use a palm grain equation, Lundberg palm, uh, palm grain equation. We know the radial load. We do not have to calculate equivalent load. We need to calculate only the C that will be 
224224 into 1.5 as a shock factor then desirable life in hours then rpm into 60 divided by 10 to 6 rotation. So, this has been converted into 5 2 rotations we require this many rotations of bearing that is a 10400 into 1500 into 60 which is much larger than 10 to 6 and we know what is applied load here it will turn out to be 1 by a and a we know for the roller bearing is 10 by 3 and a for ball bearing is 3. Based on that if we calculate what we find C for ball bearing is 32,633 Newton is something like a 33 kilo Newton for ball bearing. As we know A is slightly more for roller bearing even though for some same all other data this factor will turn out to be slightly lesser and that factor obviously static cap, uh, dynamic capacity for uh, roller bearing is 25,978 Newton or 26 kilo Newton which is surely lesser than 32.6 kilo Newton. Now, we have catalog for roller bearing, we have a catalog for ball bearing. So, first is a single row cylindrical roller bearing which is the easiest configuration. We are we are selecting bearing for shaft diameter of 25 mm. So, that is over here this bearing is for 25 mm shaft diameter that is a bow diameter is 25 mm. Outer diameter for this kind of bearing which is able to show um, dynamic capacity more than 25.978 kilo Newton that is available as 28.6 kilo Newton naturally the 28.6 kilo Newton is more than this. So, that means our bearing selection is justifiable is going to survive for the 5 years in ideal situation without much misalignment without improper mounting. Now, bearing length as a roller bearing, so the two dimensions are given 15 15 mm, inner ring 15 mm, outer ring 15 mm, they are perfect combination. In addition, we have fatigue limit that is given as a 3350 Newton, which is a more than this radial load. That means, if the shock, uh, shock factor which we consider 1.5 is not necessary 1.5 may be lesser than that then this kind of bearing is going to survive for forever is not going to fit. In other words any time applied load is lesser than fatigue limit then that the kind of bearing can survive forever. If situations are situations remain ideal there is no starvation lubricant is proper temperature is not going to increase suddenly from external environment then this kind of bearing is going to survive forever. Now, in addition to this there are two more uh, value given what is uh, the what are those values say speed rating. We can operate this bearing up to 11000 rpm operating a speed in our case is only 1500 rpm that means this kind of uh, bearing can be dislubricated easily. However, if somehow we choose a bearing and uh, this speed is a lesser than what we require then we need to go ahead with a liquid lubrication. Well, in this case 11000 is much a higher value compared to what we desire then in such in those situation we can think about grease lubricated bearing. And there is a uh, some number here given that this kind of bearing has a some designation I will say that n 205 ECP. What is the meaning of this designation? We will be discussing later. Now, we think about the ball bearing. This is from the roller bearing point of view. We have other option to choose a ball bearing. Now, for ball bearing, what we require dynamic load carrying capacity as a 32.6 kilo Newton. 
So, we selected bearing which can survive or which can show this uh, dynamic capacity more than this and that is this kind of bearing which shows a 35,800 Newton which is more than that. However, the dimension 25 mm is a bore diameter which need to be the same as the shaft diameter. Outer diameter of this bearing is 80 mm which is much larger than 52 mm for the roller bearing. That means, if there is a diametral space restriction, I should choose cylindrical roller bearing compared to this deep groove ball bearing. Coming to the XL with diameter side length of the bearing in a roller case is a 15 mm again which is a shorter than this 21 mm bearing length. That means, we are going to get a win win situation for the cylindrical roller bearing if applied lead is uh, load is exclusively axial load. We are getting lesser length, we are getting a lesser dimension or outer diameter. In addition, there was a fatigue limit which is uh, more than what is uh, applied load, while in case of the ball bearing apply fatigue limit is 815 Newton which is much lesser is almost a one third compared to applied load. So, that means, this bearing is surely going to subject it to fatigue loading is going to be fatigue failure and there will be fatigue failure of this kind of bearing. That means, if I go ahead with some knowledge I can choose a proper bearing. Otherwise, if I do not go hard with a, if I know how to choose a one bearing, easiest method is a choose directly a ball bearing. Assuming there will be a point contact, coefficient of friction will be lesser for the deep groove ball bearing, I will pick up the ball bearing. And when I do good analysis, I find my choice is wrong or I have selected a bad bearing, is a bad from outer dimension, is bad from length point of view is a bad from fatigue point of view and is bad also from operating speed point of view. Here operating speed was 11,000 permitted while here we are have only 9,000. In addition weight consideration weight of this bearing is only 130 grams while weight of this bearing is a 530 grams. From weight point of view this bearing is bad, from a speed point of view this bearing is bad. From Fatigue point of view, this bearing is bad. From uh, line point of view, from outer dim uh, dimension point of view, this deep groove ball bearing, which is a general choice of an engineer, is a bad choice. We should choose bearing after doing some analysis, some understanding is essential for bearing selection. Now, what are the important observation which we got from uh, these previous slides. You say that bearing failure is very sensitive to the applied load. Why do we say that? See you have a bearing like calculation like this where the C by P is a ratio and power for the roller bearing is 10 by 3. Now, if I say instead of P equivalent to C if I use P just a 50 percent of C, reduce the load by 50 percent, I am going to get a 10 times benefit in the bearing life. So, applied load is always going to show very high sensitivity towards the bearing life. Now, if applied load is further reduced to 50 percent of this 0.5 C, the bearing life is going to increase by another 10 times. That means, if instead of P we apply load equivalent to 25.25 P, or we say initially if we apply P is equal to C, and uh, like a uh, second case, if we apply P is equal to 0.25 C, we are going to gain 100 times more life. That means, bearing failure is very sensitive to the applied load, particularly for fatigue failure. Another thing, this bearing life is for the 90 percent reliability. If we want any other reliability, then we need to add one factor, what we say this as a life adjustment factor. 
and that factor will change with kind of the reliability we need. We need a 90 percent reliability this factor is equal to 1. Now, we need a reliability of 95 percent or we say failure probability of 5 percent then this factor is reduced to 62 percent only. Now, if we increase reliability by 1 say we want reliability instead of 95 percent to 96 percent then we are able to see the factor is further reduced. This factor is a 0.53 almost half of that. So, instead of 90 percent reliability if you think about the 96 percent reliability we are going to lose almost uh, 50 percent of the life and we want a 99 percent reliability. In that case only we are going to show or we are going to see the 21 percent of the bearing life. So, that means again the reliability is a very sensitive parameter as the reliability changes we are going to see different life of the bearing or we say that the bearing need to be replaced after that much. If we have calculated bearing life with this equation and we say that we need bearing life uh, we need a very high reliability is a 99 percent reliability. We need to multiply with that bearing life calculated uh, uh, by this equation with a 0.21 and it will tell me we need to replace this bearing after this much uh, number of cycles. What is the second uh, observation? Second observation was um, um, that load capacity as I was a, uh, shown in the previous uh, lecture load capacity depends on the number of rolling element. If in one configuration same in valve dimension number of rolling elements are increasing then even though there will be increase in the coefficient of friction, but load carrying capacity is going to increase. That was also realized in actual case when we were dealing with the case study where options were pin type cage and solid brass cage. So, this is a sketch with a pin type cage, this is a solid brass cage and uh, I am referring to the case study of a previous lecture when uh, we mentioned one outer ring failed badly in almost no time 105 hours and 300 operating hours. So, in the situation when, when we were analyzing we found management took some decision to replace existing pin type bearing with solid brass cage bearing. When we see or when we uh, examine this kind of configuration one obvious question comes if there is a pin that is going to occupy lesser space if there is a solid brass cage naturally that is going to occupy more space. So, how this kind of configuration was made in this situation when we were uh, using or our company was using this kind of bearing there were 38 rollers per row. So, 38 into 38 into 38 into 38 obviously, 38 plus 38 plus 38 plus 38, plus 38. while they shifted from pin type bearing to the solid cage bearing number of rollers reduced from 38 it reduced to the 34 means there was a 4 number of rollers lesser or we say almost a 10 percent load carrying capacity must be reduced of that kind of bearing and we know load capacity is a very sensitive parameter and it will affect the bearing life. That is why we ask them to provide the data and when we got the data is something like this. So, if dynamic load capacity for pin type cache bearing was roughly 23.3 mega Newton while for the brass cage this capacity was 26 uh, 21.6 mega Newton naturally that clearly shows this bearing had a lesser number of rolling elements. Of course, another kind of some other configuration which is a solid cage also to some extent is affecting load carrying capacity, but 
major thing is number of rollers. Here from 38 it has been reduced to 34 as the number of rollers are reduced naturally load capacity will come down and that is uh, from 23.3 mega Newton load capacity was reduced to 21.6 mega Newton. When we pointed out to company they say that they took this decision from financial point of view bearing with a solid brass case was a laser in a cost uh, roughly uh, 35 lakh rupees while bearing with a pin type that time cost was around 42 lakh rupees is something like a more than a 15 percent change in a cost and they wanted to save the money and that is why they changed the bearing type. And uh, interesting thing that they were also knowing that solid brass catch is going to show a laser life. This kind of bearing was showing around 5 years life obviously 40,000 hours of life while this kind, kind of the cage bearing uh, was, uh, was supposed to show slightly lesser life and how much lesser that can be calculated using the our equation. We say life for solid brass cage divided by life for pin type cage can be given as a ratio of the dynamic capacity that is solid brass cage it will be uh, for the same load for same value of p we can use uh, this equation for same value of p it, it will be 21.6 uh, divided by 23.3 power of 10 or oh, is a 3.33 and this ratio turn out to be 0 0.8 that means solid brass cage bearing was supposed to show only 80 percent of pin type bearing uh, life if uh, it was defined that the life for pin type cage bearing was 40,000 hours. For solid brass case, this kind of bearing was supposed to show only 32,000 of operating hours. So, we pointed out that because of the change in a bearing, the life will change, and if the life is changing naturally, the bearing will fail slightly earlier compared to what was supposed to be a life or the bearing. And they agree also, but when they know very clearly that 40,000 to the 32,000 uh, is not a major um, uh, decrease bearing which was supposed to show 5 years life, it will show 4 years life and they were ready to adjust kind this kind of behavior. Right? Now, in our previous slide um, we mentioned about uh, some sort of a specification when we referred the catalog we found there was some specific specification was given for the bearing is something like N and uh, for the ball bearing it was uh, something like a 6405 some bearing uh, number was given for the bearing. Now, uh, if I we can uh, refer back and uh, see that catalog yeah here the designation for the ball bearing is given as a 6405. Similarly, for roller bearing some specification is given as N205. ECP. So, what is the meaning of that? That is a called a nomenclature of bearing. When we see the catalog, these bearings are generally nomenclature with some numbers, and we need to understand what is the meaning of that number so that we should not go ahead with a bad choice. And that designation, that specification is standardized by standards which is a DIN 623 standard. What is the meaning of uh, this number? We say there is a different different uh, options available. There will be prefix, there will be suffix, there will be series code, and there will be diameter code. When we saw 6405, 6405 for the ball bearing, that means series code was 64, bore diameter code was 05, and there was no prefix, there was no suffix was no prefix there was no suffix in this situation, but for the roller bearing there was suffix as well as prefix suffix was ECP we will be discussing those things. So, first is in this situation uh, this uh, series has been given as a bore diameter code we say that whatever the code or bore diameter code given in this uh, other two numbers need to be multiplied by 5 to get the bore diameter for ball bearing what was a 6 4 in this and 0 5 in this so, 0 5 into 5 
that is going to give what will be the diameter of uh, bore diameter of the bearing that is of 0 phi into phi will be 25 mm and that is why we say that uh, that kind of bearing was selected for the shaft. However, there are some exceptions sometimes we get a z code here a 0 0 strange thing is that 0 0 cannot be multiplied with a phi and uh, so even if you multiply with a phi the value will be 0 0 and we know very well there will not be any diameter bore diameter something like a 0 0 which will not be able to mount on any shaft. So, some exception say when a value of the um, this uh, bore code the uh, diameter code is 0 0 that meaning is 10 mm. When this value is a 0 1 again is not 5 mm diameter if I multiply 0 1 into 5 it will be 5 mm, but actual diameter of the bearing will be 12 mm. 0 2 actual diameter of the bearing will be 15 mm, 0 3 it is a 17 mm and after that there is no problem 0 4 will be multiplied with the phi to find out the bore diameter, 0 5 will be multiplied with the phi to find out the bore diameter, 0 6 will be multiplied with the phi to get a bore diameter, 1 0 will be multiplied with a phi to get the bore diameter, even the 99 will be multiplied with the phi to get bore diameter. Now, the question comes it is only 2 series when we come to the 100 plus then again there will be some variation. We say whenever there is a 100 number where the diameter is reaching to the 100 uh, 500 mm in that case we need to write directly what is the diameter whether the 500 uh, uh, 30 diameter 511 uh, diameter whatever we need to write actual diameter in that situation we do not have to multiply with that. Similarly, if diameter of the bearing is a lesser than 10 mm, then again in that situation we need to specify diameter directly. So, there is a bearing number 511, bearing number 618 oblique, there is a bearing diam bore diameter and uh, 530 there is a bearing diameter. So, this is a the way one way to define the bearings and when we talk about the series naturally it is going to be different kind of series maybe it is a series number 4, series number 5, series number 6 that is a with a different dimension on the bearing. We will continue uh, with this topic you can see this uh, bearing um, dimensions are given when we talk about the bearing type they are specified whether the 0 number, 1 number, 2 number, 3 number, 4 number, 5 number. Then we have some sort of uh, width series, we have uh, uh, height series, we have a diameter series. What is the meaning of that is uh, this we say for the same bore diameter if I am assuming the 0 5 series for the same bore diameter outer diameter may be different. In this case, this is the smallest uh, outer diameter. We can say this bearing can be used for the extra light series, then light series, medium series, and heavy series. So, we are able to see four different diameters for the same kind of the bore diameter. So, we have a number of bearings available for the uh, same bore diameter for the same shaft which is we require for larger load carrying capacity. Naturally, load carrying capacity of uh, this kind of bearing will be much larger than this kind of the bearings. We will continue with this uh, in our uh, next lecture. Thanks for your attention.